In this video, I'm going to show you how your email server works. It's going to demystify the process behind what's going on when you push this send button on your mail client and how your message is delivered to your intended recipient. Let's take a moment and dive in. Let us talk about components of sending and receiving email. Whenever you send a message and while it is in transit, each message will go through many points. Very simplistically, they are divided to sender workstation. This is your own computer where your mail client is installed. This is the start point. Once you press send button, this is where your message is coming from. SMTP server, any email must always come through one, or usually two or three SMTP servers. They are sometimes called mail servers or email servers, whatever you prefer. We will not get stuck on the names, but just so you know. Email message storage. This is where your message will end up after you send it and it is delivered. This is similar to a database of all messages that are waiting for a particular user. In your case, your message will wait for your recipient to read it. Keep in mind that messages are never sent directly to your recipient's computer. Recipient periodically checks his mail store to see if there are any messages waiting for him. And of course, your receiver workstation. This is where your recipient's computer and where your message ends up. This is where your recipient will read it. Well, let me show you a real life scenario step by step. This is Jane. She wants to tell John how she liked her date with him and she wants to thank him and invite him to dinner in a romantic restaurant. She is asking him what cuisine he prefers, if he likes French restaurant downtown or that lovely small family restaurant down the street. Uh, yeah, okay. I was talking about SMTP servers. Okay, let's concentrate. So after Jane wrote this nice message and hit send, waiting in anticipation, this message is going to her SMTP server. Every user has one, even if you use a free Gmail account or Yahoo, or you have Outlook installed, I don't care, you will always, always send your message to SMTP server. This SMTP server is a pretty complex program. It will look at the message headers, examine the destination, and will try to find the address of another SMTP server that is responsible for holding messages for John. Now, here is that other SMTP server. Of course, if both John and Jane have email accounts on the same domain, for example, John's email is john at gmail.com and Jane's email is jane at gmail.com, there's no need to search and of course, there will be no need to contact another SMTP server. This is what is called local delivery. It's similar to sending a letter to a resident of the same building. You can just go downstairs yourself and put the envelope into his mailbox. See, there's nothing to it. Now, in a more complex case, where John's email is located elsewhere on another computer, we need to find out where exactly. This is where we ask our DNS server to give us exact location. IP address for those who know. DNS has a huge database of all network addresses and their IP numbers, and it will quickly search through those and give us an answer. This is very similar to regular mail sortation plant, so here's how it goes. We already know John's email is not on Gmail, for this example. Let's say his email is john at yahoo.com. SMTP server will take away john at and will be left with yahoo.com. It will then run a special search in DNS. Email DNS records have different record type, it's called MX or Mail Exchange for short. It will give it back one or more IP addresses of the destination servers. Yeah, there could be more than one, especially for big providers like Yahoo and Gmail that process millions of emails a second, but we won't get into that. I just mention it to scare you, that's all. Phew, glad that stage is over. Now we're almost at the end phase and we know the destination address, all we have to do is deliver this message to its destination. Our SMTP server will connect to the destination address, which we already know, the two servers will chat a bit, and our SMTP will hand over the message to destination server, where Jones has his mailbox. But that is not the end. Now Jones server will check if this message is spam, because uh, you never know. And this stage is so complex, I will not even scare you. You will see just a general overview of this process later, 
and I will probably have a separate video explaining what are the most typical anti-spam filters and uh, I don't know how they work. It's important to know if you want to send a lot of email for your email marketing, but if you're just uh, out of curiosity opening this video, you don't need it. Just so you know, most of your server's processing power is devoted to figuring if a certain message is spam or not. Often there are separate computers just for that. Because delivering a message is pretty easy. Determine if it's spam or not is very hard. At this point, we are past the spam filter and Jane's message is safely stored in John's mailbox. Or should I say in his mail uh, message store. It is waiting for John to connect to his server and get his message over to his client so John can read a lovely letter from Jane so they can finally pick the restaurant they both love. So what is SMTP? Why is it called SMTP? What is behind these letters? SMTP is just an abbreviation for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. I don't know what's so simple about it, or maybe there is some complex mail transfer protocol somewhere, but no, that's the only protocol for email we have. When it was defined back in uh, 1982 by a special committee of total brainiacs, they probably thought it was simple. But during that time, there was no Skype, no instant chat, not even email. They used to actually deliver mail by hand. You know, one it, where it actually involves a postman. Okay. But the protocol itself is text only. Back in the day, the Brainiacs thought the text is all we will ever need to deliver. So the protocol is all text. So these days, to deliver pictures and files and videos, other Brainiacs on top of the previous Brainiacs created extensions to this protocol that work around the workaround that was created to work around sending text. Yeah. Right, okay. Back to the subject. This protocol is a standard for every single email server on the planet. So all email in the world is delivered this way. Which means, of course, that all the servers on the planet must work this way and they must adhere to the protocol. Of course, this excludes Microsoft because they have special engineers and they know much better how their mail server should work. In their infinite wisdom, they kinda sorta support SMTP protocol, but they kinda sorta don't. Well, it's very flaky. I have seen many places where they just did something against the protocol. Just because they are Microsoft and there are a gazillion people using their product, they just ignore it. But other than that, all others adhere to it and use it. So now we go to actually see a real-life demonstration of a SMTP protocol in action. Remember, it's a text protocol, so all you will see is text. If you were sleeping before, WAKE UP! This is what's going to happen when you actually connect to the server. First, you are greeted with this uh, error code. 220 means everything is okay. All the error codes that start with 2 means everything is okay and uh, then the free text greeting. What you respond to that is usually you say hello, but in this case I will say extended hello, and then I will say who I am. The server will respond with an extended list of features. These are extensions I was talking about, uh, that are workarounds around the workarounds. So in this case, it will support uh, start TLS, which is encrypted email, chunking, 8-bit MIME, and so on. All the buzzwords you don't need to know about. Now, in order for me to send an, an email right now, I will go ahead and say, who is this email coming from? Mail from, let's say, It says, yeah, okay, 250. Remember the error codes with two are everything is okay. Others accepted. Now I need to say, who do I need to send it to? Address is accepted. Now uh, in email, it's all free form, so I can definitely have the same uh, from address and the same to address, doesn't matter. Obviously some spam checks will uh, filter it out later, but uh, for the sake of demonstration it's okay. 
And now the main part where the message comes. I just say data and it says, yeah, okay, I'm ready to receive your data. Start by uh, inputting your data and finish it by just the dot on a single line. So this data, first of all, you need to transmit the headers, obviously. So the message will have something like subject test. And then the message will have, I don't know, a date. And that's about it. You can just en uh, enter the empty line. Empty line says that here the headers finish and then the message begins. And to finish this message, I just need to put the dot on a single line, just exactly the same way as this guy says. And that's it. The message is accepted and will be routed. Spam checks. Very high level overview. Every message that comes into an email server, and even before the message itself comes, the connection it comes from is suspect. Email server examines your IP to see if you are from what is called bad neighborhood. There are lots of databases that check and update a list of bad IP addresses. And if your IP will be there, your connection will simply be rejected before you even have a chance to start the conversation. It is similar to uh, a saying, we don't open the door to stranger. After you are past that check, your server will verify the headers you are sending are correct. It may check that a domain from which you claim to send your message exists and that it is registered to send email from this IP. Then it may also check that the return address from your IP corresponds back to the host name you claim to be from. Of course, it will check your message itself as well if you get to that stage. This is what takes the most time. There are special artificial intelligence filters that are trained to recognize spam in your messages. It will also look for some stop words such as free, make more money, and so on. Uh, the kinds of words and phrases you will often find in a spam message. I should say that statistically about 80 to 90 percent of all emails in the world right now is spam. Yes, spammers create most of the heavy overhead on the system uh, that we use. The end users must pay for it. We pay the fees to our ISP. ISP invested into heavier infrastructure and lots of filters just to be able to accept and then immediately throw away 90% of all emails. Of course, uh, this list is by no means a complete list and uh, I will have to create just a separate video to expand on this subject.